Hello, uh, welcome to this um, chapter of my series of guitar tutorials in which I'm showing you how to play the songs from the Lotus Rising songbook. And today we're going to be looking at song number 53, which is Daughter of the Stars. I received this song in a very special moment. It was actually um, in the middle of the pandemic when I managed to sneak out of my house and drive down to the coast and spend the night in my van in the most beautiful spot. Um, it was the first time I'd been in nature for a long time, cooped up in the house. And um, it was a very, very special day. I woke up the next morning by the sea and felt this uh, sort of beautiful connection with the sky, with the ocean, with the wind, all the natural elements. And um, in that mood, I just sort of felt this song emerging um, in kind of harmony with the elements around. So it's a very simple song and it has only four chords in it, although one of the chords is a little bit unusual because it's my own version of a B7 chord. And I should say for anyone who's watching one of these guitar tutorials for the first time, I'm not attempting to be a guitar teacher here. I've never studied the guitar myself, but I have been playing the guitar for many years, accompanying myself in songs and hymns, sacred songs and devotional music circles, medicine circles. And so I have developed my own style and that's what I'm here to share with you. Um, and so, the Daughter of the Stars song, I, you can see I've got the capo and the third fret here. Now, the, the, when you put the capo on the guitar, it, it changes the sound of the chords that you're playing. And the further up the instrument you put the capo, the higher the chords go. Um, but I, I'm ref the names that I'm going to give to the chords that I'm playing in this tutorial are the actual shapes of the chords rather than what, what you're sounding, uh, what you're hearing. So let me give you a simple example. If I play this shape, that's, uh, that, that is an E minor chord and it, it, it looks like E minor and it sounds like E minor. Now, if I take that same shape, that same chord position, and I put the capo on the third fret, so the shape is exactly the same, but it sounds now higher it's coming out as a G minor chord so um, for the purposes of this tutorial when I play this chord I'm not going to call it G minor I'm going to call it E minor because I'm just referring to the shape so the four chords that you need in this song are E minor A minor B minor oh, sorry B B minor, B major, and it's a B7, and back to E minor, and then the fourth chord is a G. So if you have the chords written down as they appear in the book or um, elsewhere, it may be written as it actually sounds. So instead of saying E minor, A minor, B7, it's going to say G minor, C minor, D7. And the reason that the chords are written like that, because you may not be a guitar player, you may be a piano player, or you may be somebody who can play the guitar without the capo, and so you play a G minor chord like this, and a C minor chord like this. Um, but I'm just keeping things really simple to help those people who just know a few chord shapes, and um, with the assistance of the capo, you have access to a lot more keys. And the capo is very useful when we're sitting in song circle and we're with a lot of singers and the singers are depending on the guitar player to set the pitch. And sometimes it, a song can feel a little too high or a little too low. And so the capo allows us to very easily change key whilst staying within the chords that we know. So let's get to the song now, Daughter of the Stars. Um, has this very leisurely pace. It's a kind of slow fall. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now the way that I'm 
I'm playing the guitar with this, uh, the notes that I'm picking with this hand, they're not any particular pattern or anything that I'm really aware of what I'm doing. It's just a kind of feeling of having this hand holding down the E minor chord shape and this hand is free to, I could strum a little bit if I like at certain points. Sometimes I might want to emphasize the bass note because that gives a nice feeling of kind of depth to the chord rather than just staying only with the high notes. And also in terms of the, the fact that it's a four beat rhythm, slow four, it's nice to use that bass note to emphasize the one. a sense of some simple movement within the part so you have a kind of a bass part so there's that sense of the sort of bass note is very slowly defining the movement of the chords as you move through the song and then the other notes are just sort of providing some rhythm and also a sort of this feeling of gentle flow in the way the notes. This gentle sense of movement. So let's just look at that sequence, the first four chords. We go E minor. seven chord coming up and back to E minor so I'm just going to pause here and show you exactly what I'm doing for that B7 chord um, and I'm, as I'm a self-taught guitarist I never literally had any lessons or looked at any guitar books or any tutorials like this on YouTube I just literally picked up the guitar and started playing so when it came to B7 I figured Oh, I have to play that chord. And then I just found this shape, and I, I and that's the way that I play B7. I found out later it's not the way most people play, play B7, but I like this sound. Um, it has a slightly kind of um, um, yeah, it's got this mysterious aspect to it. Um, so let me show you. It, it looks like this. You can see which um, fingers I'm there holding down the strings. Um, so basically, if you think of an E major chord, which is like this, standard chord, everybody knows that. Now, if I take these three fingers and I just move them one string like this in the same shape, and then I take my pinky finger and I put it here on the third string, second fret, so those are the four fingers that I'm using and it makes that shape and it sounds like this. The nice thing about this chord is that this finger is playing that low F sharp, which um, becomes part of the chord. So if you're playing bass line as part of the, the way I was showing before, access to that low note now if you're not at that level of being able to pick out bass lines and you can't really follow what I'm saying in that regard that's fine because even just strumming the thing you have to be careful about and it's one of the it's one of the things about this chord that I like is that it has this open E at the top. And if you just strum across all the strings, you get that sound, which is it's kind of like a bit of like a flamenco sound or something. And I actually quite like that. But it has to be used sparingly. Otherwise, it's just, you know, it's you're too much. So generally, that note's to be avoided. And it's a similar thing when you play a chord 
like for example, if you play a D major chord in the usual position here, you obviously don't strum across all the strings, otherwise you get this sound. And so anybody who's used to playing D major on the guitar knows that you don't play this bottom str string, or top string as it's sometimes called, the, the low E. You just don't play that, you play the, just those four strings. And if you, you might be able to include the, that string as well, but not this one. So this way of playing B7 is similar, except instead of avoiding this string, you're avoiding this uh, top string here. So B7, like this, but not allowing the pick to go all the way to the top. So picking whichever notes you like, and then sometimes just one note like that thrown in gives a flavor to this song. Because in the E minor chord position, this note is part of the chord. And in the A minor chord position, this note is also part of the chord. When we get to the B7 chord, to have that note also there, it creates this sense of something running through the whole song. It's almost like a drone, but in the upper register, rather than drones are usually considered in the in the kind of lower register. And so I guess that's giving a kind of character and a flavor to the song, and it gives it this sort of timeless quality to the chord sequence in the way that we have this note that just runs through the whole sequence. I never really thought about that until I'm coming to sit down and share this with you, but I can feel that's a, a sort of element of what's going on, but definitely to be used sparingly. And so that's just something you could practice, just that B7 shape, being careful to avoid the first string, top E, and then every so often you can allow yourself to pluck it, not to just strum gently across the top strings, to say if you are accustomed to playing a B7 chord with a different shape, a more standard shape, that's perfectly fine as well. I'm not saying you have to learn to play this like I play it, but I'm just sharing with you the way this kind of um, pattern of chords evolved for me. So let's look at that first line, uh, the first um, sequence of four chords and how it fits with the lyrics. So we're just going on the E minor chord and then I'll count you in. One, two, three. Oh my mother, deep blue of the seas. Oh my mother, deep green of the trees. Oh my mother, that the second line, the second series of four chords is exactly the same as the first, apart from we replace that E minor shape with a G major shape. Apart from that, it follows the same sequence. From there, it goes to A minor and then to B7 and back to E minor. So it's a very, very simple song. And the essence of the song really is um, not so much in a kind of fancy chord structure or, or melody, it's more in the feeling of how you, you can give this sort of gentle, lyrical, flowing sense, which is something that is associated with the sort of feminine qualities of water and air and all the elements of nature, the wind, 
um, and and the lyrics of the song which talk about um, waters of the heart and uh, the moon and the midnight hour and um, the sense of the breath and um, a sense of just sort of flowing elements really which can be conveyed song which has a stronger more animated rhythm and at the same time it doesn't want to feel too um, sort of sleepy and dreamy um, it has a certain energy moving it forwards at the same time so let's just um, have a look at that second set of chords uh, the one that starts with the G major so we're going to sing the third and fourth lines, fire, flesh and bone, and I'm going to count you in. One, two, three. Oh, my mother, fire, flesh and bone. Oh, my mother, feather. So um, the, there are four verses to this song and the only kind of irregular part of the song is the last line. So I'm going to show you that. If you look at the fourth verse, I mean, it says um, the last part of the fourth verse where it says, Oh, my mother, guardian of my soul, I offer you my heart as this path of love unfolds. And so we have slightly different melody and sequence there. Oh, my mother, guardian of my soul, I offer you my heart as this path of love unfolds. Oh, my mother, guardian of my soul, I offer you my heart. So what happens there is um, the sequence starts the same as in the previous verses, you have G for four beats, A minor for four beats, and then instead of going to B7, you just stay on the A minor for another two beats and then change to B7 for just two beats before going back to the E minor. However, what I tend to do there um, is I play the melody for those lines. And there's kind of a reason for this, I suppose, which is that um, the context of these songs that we call medicine songs, and they come from medicine ceremonies um, or from kind of song circles where people are singing these healing songs, devotional songs. Um, the, the role or the function of the guitarist is very much a supportive role where you're helping the people who are there in the circle with you to find the pitch and the melody and the rhythm of the song. And so when you come to a place in the song where the melody suddenly changes, if people are not familiar with the song, or even if they are familiar, it might catch them unawares, it might catch them by surprise. And so at that point, as the guitarist, you can help people, you can support people that little bit extra by just switching to the melody and then the voices will naturally follow you. Otherwise, you sometimes get these clunky moments where half the people know what's coming because they've heard the song before or they know the song and the other half are just joining in and they're not expecting the fourth verse to have a different melody. And so you get this kind of clash and it can sound a little bit clunky and to a certain extent that's fine because we're not in, you know, we're not in performance mode. We're just sharing songs. But uh, let me show you what I mean about how the playing the melody there can help. Oh, my mother, guardian of my soul, 
I offer you my heart as this path of love unfolds. So instead of going A minor, A minor, B7, E, and then just assuming the voices are going to naturally find their way to the mel the changing melody, they probably won't naturally find their way unless people already know the song. So the guitarist can really help there and just switch the melody. But now if I sing, Oh my mother, guardian of my soul. So that up to that point, it's the same as the previous verses. Oh my mother, fire, flesh and my mother, black and blue and gold. So the expectation there of the chords following the melody as it's been sung, um, the expectation is unbroken. The chords, the rhythm, the harmony, the melody all follow the same pattern. It's when you get to that last line in the song that the melody and the chord sequence changes and that's when I switch to playing the melody on the guitar. Oh, my mother, guardian of my soul, now here yeah, I offer you my heart as this path of love unfolds. Oh, my mother, guardian of my soul, I offer you song. So some of these medicine songs, playing the melody on the guitar all the way through is an option. Um, and in some of these tutorials I'm showing you how to do that, how you can combine picking out the melody notes with the chords and making a, sign, a kind of combination of the two. So sometimes you focus on the melody, sometimes on the chords. Um, and that can be a very um, engaging way to play the guitar for these songs because they use similar chords in a lot of the songs and if you just play the chords for every song it can start to sound a bit like everything sounds very much the same and whereas the melody is distinct for every song so being able to play the melody of the song um, is a really you know it's a valuable asset to uh, being able to play the chords um, but in this case I think having that rolling, lilting rhythm in, in the chord sequence really supports the song. And so in, I'm just emphasizing the melody towards the end of the song. And it's, it's quite nice in, in a way because it's like a kind of, it's like a kind of a, like a little coda or something. The song is very repetitive and simple. And it says, oh, my mother, at the beginning of every line. Oh, my mother, oh, my mother, oh, my mother. There's four verses and you hear this, oh, my mother, you know, four, eight, 12, 15 times in a row. And then the last line of the song, the 16th line of the song, it breaks the pattern. And instead of saying, oh, my mother, at the beginning of the line, it says, I offer you my heart. And so it's like, oh, my mother, oh, my mother, it's almost like a chant. And then you get to the end of the song I offer you my heart. And it's almost like everything's leading up to that point. And so to break the um, to break the pattern of what the guitar's doing at the same time as the voice breaks the pattern of that kind of chanting, oh my mother, and have the guitar and the voice step outside that pattern together, oh my mother, oh my mother, oh my mother. I offer you my heart. Oh, my mother, guardian of my soul, I offer you my heart as this path of love unfolds. And it's like kind of, you know, it's like the song sort of proceeds in this way and it's very repetitive and then you get to the end and something different happens and it's like a kind of ceiling of the the journey that we've been on 
Um, so yeah, that's um, that's Daughter of the Stars, and I like doing these video uh, tutorials for these songs because I never think about these things until I sit down in front of the camera with the intention to share with you, and then I sort of receive these insights into what I'm doing on the guitar or how the guitar complements the, the melody. Um, so I hope that's been helpful to you and of course if you have any questions or any doubts or comments you can always just write to me here um, in the chat and I'll get back to you. And um, yeah we're going to sing the song through one time now and please check out my other um, tutorials. You can find uh, tutorials for some of the other songs from The Lotus Rising here on the channel. And um, I'm very happy to that these tools and these channels exist to be able to share in this way. And, uh, okay, let's sing the song through together. So the beginning, I usually just play through the chord sequence once, the first four chords, and then the voice just naturally arises from that. But I'll count you in so you can start with me. One, two, three, four. Heart of the humming 
And um, when I was singing just now, uh, for those of you who watched to the end, there's a little bit of extra material for you. Um, I realized there's another element to this, which is the words um, of the song, they have these different sort of layers um, to them in a way, because on the one hand, you have the meaning of the lyric which is full of imagery, the moon and the ocean, and the trees and different colors, green, blue, black, gold, and the sense of um, elements. But then there's another aspect to the lyrics, which is th the way that they have a musical quality in themselves. And I notice that sometimes when I'm singing, the way that I sing brings out the, a, a kind of musical relationship between the words sometimes and I, I'll show you what I mean for example in the third verse the line jewel of the universe I could a uh, jewel of the universe I could sing like this oh my mother jewel of the universe because if you think of the one two three then it might be natural to emphasize the words jewel of the universe so the emphasis would go on universe but actually there's a kind of euphonious aspect to the sound of jewel and universe that's the same jewel of the universe and that i'm quite conscious of that when i'm singing so rather than emphasize universe i'm emphasizing universe to, to bring out the relationship of those sounds jewel of the universe like this, oh my mother, jewel of the universe, jewel of the uni, and that goes beyond the meaning of the words. It goes beyond the rhythm and the pitch and the melody. It's something else. It's to do with the kind of color of the sounds and how they have almost like a meaning of their own. And this was a very important aspect to me of the lyrics of the Brazilian. Santo Daimi Hinus that I learned when I first came in the medicine path because I didn't speak Portuguese. But I could recognize the color and the sound of the words and how they were sort of dancing and had this meaning of their own independently of the sort of literal meaning. So in some of these lines, you can play with that when you're singing it and it complements what you're doing with the guitar, what you're doing with the voice. And so these two elements are kind of telling a story together. In this, if we just look at that third verse, um, jewel of the universe, and then heart of the hummingbird, heart, you, the word start, uh, begins with the letter H, and then hummingbird is the same. So heart of the hummingbird, jewel of the universe, heart of the hummingbird, moon of the midnight hour, the moon, 
midnight. And so I'm bringing that out and I'm singing, moon of the midnight hour. And I'm, I feel the words kind of like um, having their own life almost as I sing them. Um, and it's almost like a magical element to the song that the words are sort of manifesting with this sense of meaning which lies beyond the surface of the actual meaning of the words. It's like they, they're speaking in their own way. Oh, my mother, jewel of the universe. Oh, my mother, heart of the hummingbird. Oh, my mother, moon of the midnight hour. Oh, my mother. So, um, that was just something that occurred to me when I was singing them. I thought I'd share with you. Thank you for watching this video and um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to connect and share in this way. There's some very personal songs and um, I really appreciate the connection. So, thank you. <laughs>
Maya Mahat as this path of love. Unknown. 